Hello, good afternoon, and uh, thank you for joining uh, today's panel. Uh, my name is William Herkelrath. I'm a managing director at Chainlink Labs, focusing on strategic initiatives, uh, business development, and some of the other aspects of our business. And uh, today, I'm really pleased to be joined uh, by Rick uh, McFarland of um, LexisNexis. Rick, would you uh, like to introduce yourself, please? Sure. Thanks. Thanks, William. Um, uh, Rick McFarland, Chief Data Officer, LexisNexis. Um, we're uh, legal data and uh an analytics provider um and uh i am uh formerly i uh worked at uh hearst as their chief uh, data scientist and then uh before that i was at amazon.com um super excited to be here appreciate it great no we're happy to have you uh so as far as we know you know lexus nexus is interested in and in becoming a chain link node provider uh, and, you know, we'd love to understand what some of the unique opportunities might be for trusted legal data in this uh, smart contract economy. Yeah, um, Lexus, Lexus Nexus, for those people that don't know, we have a, we have a huge, uh, over two petabytes uh, of current and historical legal case law data for the U.S. and um, several other countries all around the world. Um, we collect this data from over 50,000 different uh, providers, um, and we actually s store that. We mine it, uh, we process it, and create um, enrichments for it. Um, we also collect a lot of news data, um, as well as financial information, um, and basically we serve the the, the legal the legal market. Um, I think um, I think uh, smart contracts. Uh, they can ask. They can start to begin to ask a, a number of legal proceeding questions involving a particular entity, like a company or an organization, um, and we can provide a lot of information regarding that that uh, that legal entity. That's fantastic. So, if you're, I guess, if you let's say you're a smart contract developer uh, and you're thinking about how to, you know, to make the best use of some of this uh, data, what are some of the first thoughts that come to to your mind? Um, well, we, we do keep track of, uh, lots of different, uh, regulatory filings, uh, about different, uh, companies, public companies. Um, we also, um, could collect information and calculate, uh, um, ESG indexes, environmental, social governance indexes that where we actually, um, can look at companies being involved in different kinds of uh, for example, di discrimination cases. Um, um, let's see. I feel like I feel like any number of these uh, these decentralized applications can begin to leverage some of that information um, in their contract development process. That's good. So I mean, I, I'm assuming these are. So I know the brand. I, I've been, the brand has been around for a long time, and I'm certainly aware of it. Uh, and the premium data sets they're in. So, so, so what do you, th I mean, you're thinking that just about everything in the Lexus Nexus library will eventually has some position, you know, on chain or are there specific data sets that you think are going to be the most uh, relevant in the nearest, in the near term? Yeah. I mean, I think I, my, my vision is eventually I, I'd like to see all of our, our data um, assets and information be leveraged in, in smart contracts because, because I believe um uh, many companies and many businesses are going to start entering into the smart contract environment and creating contracts on any number of topics and things and need and and need decision making information. Uh, I think maybe in the near term, um, more more information around companies uh, because I think a lot of smart contracts are done between organizations. Um, Company information. We we mine and, and collect data from the news, uh, news data, um, and legal news data as well. And we provide those that information into M and A deals. Um, we help uh, law firms, uh, you know, understand and follow different companies' uh, uh, reputations uh, as they uh, get involved in uh, over time in 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 the news. Um, so I think I think in the near term, I, I, I believe a lot of our company level information could be leveraged in the smart contract decision making. 
That's great. And you have, I think you have, you have financial data as well, right? I'm guessing about it just, you have, an, or you and, or some of your sister companies have a, a, a fair amount of information in that area or? Yeah, we, uh, we do maintain a very large data asset around uh, companies. Um, we collect information from many different sources. Um, and some of that information includes, well, uh, obviously we include the financial information, any kind of SEC filings uh, we maintain. We also maintain uh, information around the uh, the leadership of that company, uh, the sectors they're in. Um, obviously, we serve a lot of law- lawyers dealing with M&A, so we do keep track of, uh, you know, any kind of adjustments if the company gets, uh, you know, joins with another, co- merges with another company, or if the leadership changes. Um, uh, I think that information, uh, because we deal with lawyers, we got to be up to date in, in, in a timely fashion, so... Uh, I think that would be something very useful uh, in the near term for smart contracts. Yeah. Um, so, is there a is there a play possibly here where you know smart contracts can um, and verifiable data within them can be used to create a more transparent uh, and fair legal system? Is 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 I mean, obviously, it sounds like your clients are kind of already legal clients, right? So, if you think of a smart contract as effectively just another legal client. Is there something particular about the way smart contracts work that that uh, that that can really add that transparency and, and that fairness into the process? That's a that's a great question. I think I, we've been thinking about this a lot lately. Um, one of our one of our um, important things we like to promote uh, is is what we call the rule of law around the world, and we actually calculate uh, the, we have a calculation a metric around the rule of law where we do it by country and by state, um, and it, it involves four key components. Um, the uh, equality of the law is one of them, accessibility to the law, transparency of the law, and access to an independent judiciary. Uh, these are four key components of our rule of law metric, and um, we use our data uh, that we collect internally um, from all the legal systems that we, we uh uh, collect information from, and we calculate these scores over time. And I, I actually think that uh, accessibility and transparency are two things that, in certain countries or certain places of the world, where that those the rule of law score is low, and it's low because of a lack of accessibility to the law or a lack of transparency. The laws can be quite complicated or not easy to understand by everybody. Um, where smart contracts uh, with, you know, uh, their decentralized networks and um, access to a, a shared upon or agreed upon Oracle that's a well-known uh, and respected Oracle um, can create a, a level of uh, transparency uh, and, and bring the, the rule of law score up higher in, in areas where perhaps it's it's harder to have uh, a fair contract. That's great. So I think right away that leads me to think that this is an opportunity that's, I think, far beyond the U.S., right? So, I mean, you guys are a U.S.-based yeah. firm, right? And I'm, I'm sure you have... Oh, no, no, we're, we're worldwide. Uh, our headquarters, uh, headquarters in the U.S. is in New York, but uh, we're part of Relics uh, Group, uh, a larger entity out of... Out of uh, uh, Amsterdam, and um, we actually have, I'm the legal space, but the Relics has medical as well as uh, scientific uh, data assets. Um, but yeah, uh, the U.S. Is a, is a large part of our market, of course, and we have worldwide reach. And so with worldwide reach, worldwide data, uh, mm-hmm. different data sets, this is something, is there an opportunity here, I guess, maybe in parts of the world where this data is, I mean, is that really part of the play here is, is taking advantage of, 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 of getting this data distributed to places where it might be more difficult to, to obtain? And if so, do you have some examples maybe of, of how you think that might play out? Or? Um, yeah, well, I mean, not everybody uh, can afford to have access to LexisNexis uh, to, uh, in some of the countries where, you know, um, and also, you have to be, you know, have to have some legal knowledge to be able to search it. But we are available in libraries and uh, public locations around the world. Um, um, but I do think 
you know, at the end of the day, the whole point is to make make the law applicable and fair to others so that you, we can establish contracts or establish um, access to uh, the legal system in, a, in an automated way. I think, you know, the smart contract opportunity is where, you know, you go into those places where it's harder to create a legal contract. You don't have access to a lawyer uh, or a, a legal system to you know enforce it um, by engaging with the smart contract and, and putting it in a decentralized network protects it and then having an agreed upon oracle which uh, lawyers and law firms use to make decisions can bring contracts and and these uh, uh, so, some of the legal uh, aspects to places where it's harder to get yeah you know i honestly I- I guess I don't really know, but it, it almost sounds like an automation of something that effectively the, the, the system's already doing, right? I mean, you're, you're kind of already serving, I'm, I think, as an oracle in the real world. Uh, it's just that there's a manual process, right? I mean, it's, it, yes. it's, just, it's the same concept is happening. It's just uh, happening with people looking into your database online or wherever their access or going to the library or whatever else, right? So, so this is effectively probably an opportunity for them to just kind of codify that, um, that process. So are there, are there efficiency gains there as well? I mean, it sounds like that's probably a fairly labor intensive operation today. Yeah, it is. And I think, you know, uh, and a lot of times contracts get signed and put into a drawer and um, not looked at again um, in the real world, I think. Um, and of course, having, you know, having somebody having an automated process to you know monitor that contract constantly and ensure that it is executed on time and fairly uh even in today's in today's world where it's done you know between two legal parties and and a, and a physical paper or document i think there are still advantages of doing it in an, in an electronic way um and and in an automated way uh, it ensures ensures execution and, and timely execution and and also ensures that there's an agreed upon um uh, an agreed upon process to determine whether the contract is fair uh, and um, um you know you can also have a lot of follow-on arguments in the real world on contracts on who's right and who's wrong and so uh it does create a lot of um does create a lot of time into the system, uh, but I think you know smart contracts are definitely an efficiency play um, uh, because all, all, all things are agreed upon up front and it's fully automated. So um, uh, I think it'll bring it'll it'll make uh, it'll make the speed of the contracts uh, process a lot faster. I believe. Yeah. So maybe one last question. I'm just kind of curious. Uh, people ask me this all the time, so I'm going to, I'm, I'm going to put you on the spot and ask you, people ask me, is this demand driven or supply driven? Meaning are we all sitting in a room and, and inventing these ideas and, and, um, and hoping that if we build that the world will come to us, right. Or do we actually see people, uh, you know, when you decided that you wanted to get into blockchain, was that, uh, was that because you were getting, you know, dozens and dozens of phone calls or, you know, I'm just really curious how, how you see the evolution so far, where we are in, 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 the, in the process, is it the first inning, is it the second inning? And, and again, uh, why today? Why, why is this an exciting area for you guys to be in today um, for, for, from that perspective? Um, yeah, well, that's, um, that's an interesting question. Uh, I think, um, well, the way my firm works and the way we work is we serve our customers. Our, our customers predominantly are our lawyers and law firms. Um, also hedge funds, uh, anywhere where, where there's a lawyer involved. Um, and uh, we, have this, we have this motto, and we have this saying, it's customer first at LexisNexis. And we've been observing lately um, a lot of uh, law firms and um, legal groups uh, are entering into the smart contract uh, arena. And um, I think... Uh, there's an increasingly large number of, uh, of smart contract deals occurring with our cu- customers, and we get a lot of questions about it. And, um, you know, I, I, 
Um, I think it's important for us to listen to our customers and and I, I view my role as trying to be, you know, forward thinking and try to be, I, I try to be where my customers are going to be in a year or two years or five years from now so that we have the information that they need and the tools that they need to do their job. And I think um, as smart contracts grow, which I think they will continue to grow in, in use, uh, right now they're highly financially financial service driven, but they're uh, the use cases are growing now that they've reached into the law firms. Um, I I want to be able to provide the services and the information to my customers, so that um, uh, so that they can be confident uh, and be comfortable because they already use LexisNexis today for their uh, physical uh, paper contracts um, and decision making uh, that we also be a part of the the new contract environment that is growing in the, in the legal space. That's great. So, um, I, I, uh, I think I've cheated. I think I've actually gone us a little over time, unfortunately, but I, but the reality is we could talk about this for very, you know, uh, for hours. So I really appreciate yeah. you joining us today. I think it's fantastic to see you, uh, entering the space. And I really can't wait to see some of the cool applications that people are going to build, uh, on, on top of your infrastructure. Thanks, William. Thanks All for right. having me. Thanks so much for joining us. Thank you so much, Richard McFarland, William Herkorath. It's uh, really heartening, at least to me, to see lawyers and, and legal data providers enter the space with their curiosity and moving forward with that uh, as well.